Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah Khalees, an indie game developer currently finishing my second commercial title, Dashing Fire. It's a challenging roguelike about dashing between small, juicy worlds filled with creatures and loot. There's epic boss fights, diverse areas, powers to collect, story and more. I'm the sole developer on this project, which has been in the works for roughly 9 months. I've made almost a dozen devlogs about the creation process of this universe, and in this video we'll continue the dashing fire journey. I'll share with you a day in my life as a game creator from early morning to night time. We'll see how long I work, what I do to stay balanced and motivated, progress made on the project, and more. Before diving in, I wanted to let you know that if you're interested in learning how to create video games, then I've made four complete game development courses available on Udemy. One will bring you through the absolute basics of programming, the Unity game engine and art. Another teaches you how to make an entire top-down shooter, or perhaps you would be more interested in creating a platformer adventure from A to Z. Finally, there's a course on creating a turn-by-turn -turn strategy game. All links are in the description, and remember there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you don't like the teaching style, there's no loss on your part. So for the past month, I've been waking up at quarter past seven. There's nothing quite like fresh, early morning air. It gives me time to meditate, eat a good breakfast, take my time without rushing to work. Sometimes I might very well want to begin working and creating games, as soon as I get up, but gently forcing myself to let go of those impulses helps me keep up consistent, good quality work. Less hours in the Blackthorn Prod office means more enjoyment and more done in the long run. Around 9 o'clock, it's time to start creating. I open up Unity, Visual Studio and Photoshop, which are the softwares I use to create my games, and then check Trello to see what I need to get cracking on for the day. My planning is straightforward and simple, and this morning I need to work on boss fights. More specifically, I've added some explanations to these monstrous battles, which diverse slightly from the game's levels. To make sure the player doesn't accidentally skip these, I'll have him or her hold down a mouse button for about one and a half seconds before the fight can begin. So let's get to work. And here's the end result. It's almost 11pm now, this took quite some time since I needed to do so for every boss, character and there's about a dozen. The next task for the day is to fix a pesky glitch when hovering over the sun. If the mouse pointer is on the edge, it jitters back and forth like this, which is very unappealing. Okay, a few minutes later and the simple solution to this was to wait a tiny bit of time before having the sun transition back to normal after the cursor hovers over it. Dashing Fire is a world I'm close to considering complete. I've almost finished work on the project, and if it wasn't for a fellow game creator, Yan, there are many small inconsistencies and bugs I may not have seen before launch. So shout out and thank you to him for his helpful feedback on Discord. Dashing Fire would probably risk going on and on if I didn't set myself a deadline to work towards though, so keep an eye out for the game's launch date trailer sometime soon. I'm so excited to have you all explore this game I've been creating throughout the year. Meanwhile, my brother Liam, fellow instructor on the four game creation Udemy courses I published in the past two years, is also working on his own projects. He set himself the challenge to make a small game every week to expand his skills and experience. So far he's made a digital version of the popular Mind Twister Quarto, and a cool experiment where you must find the outlaw stealing gold from good, law-abiding citizens. Now with the end of the morning upon us, it's time to head to the kitchen where I can continue improving my cooking skills. Cooking is a newfound mini-passion, helps the family, is both creative and most of the time relaxing, and doubles my appetite for good food. After that tasty lunch, I head back to the office. My quest for the afternoon is to add a simple stats page to Dashing Fire's main menu. Here the player can see how many deaths, total wins, quests completed and so on. All the art and coding took me about 2 hours and by 2 o'clock it was time to head with my brother 
to our first meeting with an accountant. That might sound a little dull, but we definitely need some help setting up all the paperwork and administrative shenanigans for Blackthorn Prods. I'm more than happy to pay an expert on the topic so that I can mainly focus on creating rather than confusing research. Since the last devlog about two weeks ago, I've made a ton of progress on Dash and Fire, quite a bit of which isn't readily apparent but important nonetheless. Here's an overview of changes made to my game since then. So I made it so you can't encounter the same boss twice in a row. The game now feels fresher and the variety more apparent. The level up scene once had a timeline showing player progress that looks like this. Now it looks like this, a lot cleaner and simple I think. When you're at one health, to warn players of the danger, I've added a red border to the screen as well as a heartbeat sound. It's subtle and helpful. I've added dark levels to the game which have one chance out of eight to appear in any given level. This simply limits how far the player can see making the game a tad more challenging. To balance things out, there's flying stars that spawn during dark levels, which give the player extra star loot if caught. I also added lava, or a spiky wall, behind the player in every single level to add some pressure. I realized some players would explore the entire level and collect every single chest. This slows down the game's pace, gave players way too much loot, and felt quite boring. So having something to pressure slow players was a nice little addition. Next up I made sure you can't take damage when you reach the sun in a level. Tweaked the achievement box with a golden highlight so it's clearer you unlocked it. Many juicy sound effects were added in boss fights or elsewhere. Some people have asked whether I make all the sound effects and the answer for this project is no. I do absolutely everything except the creation of sound effects and music. I make some sound effects with Audacity, my voice and objects I come across, but most I find on the internet or asset store, making sure I can use them for commercial purposes, of course. So my main job is to find the right ones and then implement those sounds in-game. For music, I'm working alongside the great composer Dave Allen. He made the awesome soundtracks for The Dreadful Whispers, and he's delivering quality work yet again for Dashing Fire. Oh, and if you head to Dashing Fire's Steam page, you'll see it has been updated, with shiny new screenshots, descriptions, and a nice animated GIF. Remember to hit the wishlist button if you're interested in playing Dashing Fire when it gets released. And even if you don't want to play but like my videos and feel like helping me out, then wishlisting is a fast, simple way you can do so. Anyway, back to my day. It's already 5 o'clock. Now I want to continue my journey to becoming a warrior. For that, I need to enter the training camp. And to end what I consider a great day, I'm heading to my grandparents for an excellent dinner. There are some of the best cooks I know, and a little board game session. So there you have it, it's a normal day as an indie game developer living in France. Let me know if you would like to see more devlogs like this. I'm going to try and keep things fresh, varying my days, improving my editing skills, devlog storytelling. In the meantime, if you want to hear more from me, then consider checking out a really cool conversation I had with Thomas Brush, an incredible game developer and YouTuber. He made the amazing games Pinstripe and Never Song, and I was very lucky to get to talk with him and share stories and experiences. Okay, thanks for watching, stay tuned, cheers!